Hello people. Today I want to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and basically about the virus. So I want to talk about the basic known uh, information. All started in Wuhan, China in December 2019 and now we got to here where we have <clears throat> a global pandemic with uh, all kinds of different information. But uh, what are the basic information and what is basically uh, known about the virus? So, this virus is uh, uh, a virus that spreads via air droplets. So, in these air droplets, we can find uh, the COVID virus. And viruses that spread uh, in this way... Uh, we are airborne particles uh, and that in, in fact the respiratory system can spread very easily and especially if there is an incubation period where people are infected and uh, they can and when they can spread the virus or when they have milder symptoms and when they are going around and still uh, spreading the virus uh, so viruses that are like the common cold can spread notoriously easy from human to human. That's why the common cold spreads every year around the world. But the problem with the common cold is that it, uh, in 99% of the cases, doesn't cause pneumonia. So it uh, causes only uh, a mild respiratory illness. With the COVID virus, so with uh, SARS-CoV-2, Basically, uh, the coronavirus uh, causes uh, pneumonia in about 20% uh, of the cases that is severe. So more than 50% of lung tissue is involved. And that is a huge, huge number uh, of people that actually need hospital treatment. And that is where the problem uh, lies, one of many problems. So, COVID-19 or the uh, coronavirus, so the virus, is uh, spread via airborne particles. And obviously, uh, these airborne particle, particles are somehow inhaled and they uh, travel via the airborne uh, route, via the respiratory, upper respiratory system, all the way to the uh, lung tissue. And then they infect the lung tissue. The infection of the lung tissue, so uh, it is known that this uh, virus has a protein on its surface, the so-called spike. Spike protein. And this is uh, the protein that helps the virus to infect our cells. So the spike protein uh, attaches to our cells. So this is a pneumocyte type 2 cell. So a pneumocyte type 2. And this cell is uh, one of the cells present in our alveoli. There is also a pneumocyte type 1 that lines the surface of the alveoli. And these pneumocytes type 2, they are on the surface, I will just say they are cleaning up the alveoli. But they have on the surface of their membranes this protein. So this protein is called ACE2. So angiotensin converting enzyme 2 protein and it is acting as a receptor for spike and this is the way the virus enters these cells so this is happening here this reaction is happening here on the cell membrane and the virus gets inside the cell so the virus uh, uses then uh, it disassembles and its RNA so its genetic material is uh, using the cell organelles to produce more virus proteins and more RNA uh, genetic material 
and uh, once much of it is produced the virus assembly happens in the cell so the virus gets assembled again in the cell and it makes actually a lot of its copies so the virus is very small in comparison to, to the cell once the cell is infected and once its machinery is used to produce more viruses thousands uh, uh, many hundreds thousands of viruses are being then uh, released and of course uh, you can imagine once this is a chain reaction how big of a reaction this can become uh, this happens in the alveoli in the lung if this becomes an uncontrolled reaction uh, uh, we will have a big immune response if it is stopped somewhere in the start we will have a smaller Im immune response so if our immune system is very fast and precise into destroying the cells and blocking the virus uh, the immune reaction can be uh, very um, small but if this becomes a chain reaction much of the lung can be involved so once the virus infects the cell and comes out uh, our immune reaction starts first of all of course macrophages cytokines get released neutrophils come into the alveoli and then uh, then we have this basic inflammatory reaction that it, that is happening in some part of the lung and this inflammatory reaction clogs up it uh, happens in in the alveoli and then this is actually then a pneumonia that's developing and that is the problem the problem with this virus is it uh, happens there are milder cases only restricted to the upper airways but the problem is there are many 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 people that are developing mild or even 20 percent of these pneumonias are severe um, uh, around uh, 40 percent are severe so more than 50 percent of the lung is evolved and around five percent are critical where uh, a, a, a huge amount of lung tissue uh, is involved and COVID-19 uh, or SARS-CoV-2 is causing most of the time bilateral pneumonia so uh, both lungs uh, will have uh, parts of them that are infected what is happening once uh, our immune system recognizes uh, that there is a virus so on every uh, surface of our body in our mucosa there are these cells these cells are called antigen presenting cells apcs so these cells will take up the foreign uh, body in this case it's it's this virus they will disassemble uh, the virus and uh, find and express the virus proteins so this assembly and in these small vesicles uh, they will express the viral proteins on its cell membrane so here on the cell membrane uh, there is this viral protein that is expressed these cells will travel to lymph organs let's say a lymph node and they will try to find T cells that uh, will respond to these uh, to these uh, proteins once they find uh, a T cell that is I will say it like that in the mood to respond to this protein so once they find a T cell that has a receptors for the protein the T cells will then start the immune reaction that we actually need so the specific immune reaction that will eliminate the virus the T cells then will develop into T into T cell CD4 helper and into T cells CD8 cytotoxic cells so these are two kinds of cells the cytotoxic cells that are going and finding our infected cells that are infected with the virus and they are destroying them 
the T4 helper cells are helping the overall reaction to happen and uh, there are also T regulatory cells. They are controlling the, re the, the reaction so it doesn't go uh, too wild. Also, the T cells will uh, activate B cells. So B cells, uh, when they get activated, they uh, convert into plasma, into plasma cells, and plasma cells produce antibodies. So they crank out a lot of antibodies, and these antibodies then are specifically produced to block the spike protein. So then these antibodies go and block the spike protein. You can see that uh, with the cytotoxic T cells, we are destroying the fabric of the virus. The virus can, has no niche to be produced. And with the antibodies, uh, all the virus particles that are in circulation are being blocked by, to enter an, other, other cells. And in this way, uh, the infection stops and the virus gets eliminated. So you can imagine that people who have uh, an immune system, the trick with the immune system is not that it, not uh, the immune system uh, is bad when it is weak and it is bad when it is uh, too strong. So it needs to be precise and specific, like a, a high-tech rocket, in order to really precisely destroy what needs to be destroyed and to leave the healthy tissue uh, alive. So if this reaction is fast and if it is tailored to destroy the virus, then uh, the virus will be eliminated and uh, the pneumonia will not, the immune reaction will not destroy the lungs. So uh, all of this in mild cases happens uh, in two weeks. <laughs> so um, the virus gets and infects our body and the immune reaction happens and, and it eliminates it. In cases that are complicated, this can uh, last for uh, four weeks and in more and more complicated cases, six and seven weeks. But at that time, six to seven weeks, it will come to some resolution. Either we will uh, manage to eliminate the virus or it will come to the negative outcome. So, <clears throat> once the virus, uh, uh, why uh, is COVID so uh, problematic? Uh, so, the problem lies in our respiratory system that gets infected. So, if these are alveoli, and with, if we zoom in, so these are normal alveoli, and these are uh, when in the infection happens. Normal alveoli are uh, there, uh, so are actually little sacs, and the wall of the alveoli is where the gas exchange happens. So CO2 is being released, and uh, CO2, and O2 is being taken up. For this to happen, we need air here in these uh, alveoli. Once the virus enters, uh, the blood vessels that are in the wall of the alveoli. So in the wall of the alveoli uh, and the cells that are uh, in, in the uh, walls of the alveoli and on the alveoli start producing cytokines. These cytokines make the walls of the uh, arterioles more permeable and uh, fluids start leaking into uh, the alveoli. Also, cells that produce uh, surface agents that are uh, keeping the alveoli open get destroyed. Uh, other cells come into the alveoli and this reaction causes fluid buildup and debris buildup in the alveoli. Once this happens, once many alveoli are clogged up, once uh, the fluid is clogged up, clogging up the alveoli sacs, and uh, as it is infecting more and more alveoli, uh, the oxygen concentration in blood will drop, and uh, that is uh, one of the big problems of this pneumonia. So the oxygen is dropping, and once you ha don't have oxygen, once you have hypoxia, that is a big problem, because all our tissues 
including uh, brain, heart, lungs, uh, skin, all tissues need oxygen in order to function. And then you can see if the case is mild and if a smaller percentage of lung tissue is involved, of course, uh, the patient will need less uh, supplementary uh, oxygen. But if the case if 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 the case is severe, if more than fifty percent of uh, lung tissue is involved, he will maybe need ten to fifteen liters of oxygen sixteen hours a day in order to keep the concentration of oxygen above ninety five percent in the blood. So the saturation of oxygen in the blood. So uh, the next point is that um, we know. Uh, now that mm, the coronavirus is not only a virus that is just infecting uh, the lung. So this ACE receptor, this is a pneumocyte type 2 and it has the ACE2 receptor. The spike on the cell surface of the virus cell actually uh, the, on the virus can infect these cells. These cells are present in the lung and then uh, of course this reaction happens that are explained. The cases can be mild and they are mild in 81%. So the, I'm talking also about mild pneumonias that can be uh, treated uh, uh, sufficiently and 14 cases uh, are severe where the patient has a significant pneumonia that needs hospital treatment and 5% of cases are critical that uh, the outcome there is uh, not favorable so in mild cases Patients will have all the symptoms that have been described every every week now on television. Fever, fatigue, runny nose, sore throat, loss of smell, and so on. In severe disease, all of these symptoms will be uh, aggravated, but patients will also have cough, uh, um, a higher fever, difficulty breathing, and uh, if you uh, test them, if, uh, if you uh, test the saturation in the oxygen saturation in the blood, you will see that they have hypoxia. So if uh, too much of uh, lung tissue is involved, the oxygen saturation in the blood will drop. And of course, these patients need to be admitted to the hospital. One third of all people infected do not uh, develop uh, symptoms. So one third are actually asymptomatic uh, uh, patients. The interesting thing about the lung. So if the case is mild, there is uh, our body is cleaning up the virus and there is no problems. But in severe and critical cases, we need to think about uh, lung fibrosis. So it is possible that in the, the, the cases that are severe and critical, the severe reaction uh, uh, on the virus, and if it is spreading too much of the lung and the severe reaction can lead to destruction of the alveolar, alveolar wall. Once that wall gets destroyed, it can no longer be built up and it uh, actually heals by fibrosis. And fibrosis uh, does not uh, help our body. It actually has no capacity for uh, uh, gas exchange. And it is just like any scar on the skin. It doesn't, uh, a wound on the skin, it doesn't heal with normal skin, but with fibrosis and a visible scar. And the same happens in the lung. Uh, the next thing is the diagnosis. So in the region where I live, the diagnosis is mostly made when people come in 
the symptoms are seen. So an anamnesis and a clinical evaluation is done. And then uh, a decision is made. Uh, do they need a PCR, a real time PCR test uh, on SARS-CoV-2? And if this test is negative, they are being evaluated further. If it is positive, blood work is done and also x-ray or ct low dose ct uh, of the chest depending on the size of the hospital an x-ray of the chest or a low dose ct of the chest are done and then the uh, the disease is evaluated it is evaluated does this patient need hospital treatment or can this uh, be treated uh, in the uh, home uh, setting with uh, therapy given. So the interesting thing about COVID is that viruses and especially COVID that is a novel virus has we have no specific treatment for it. So mild cases are treated uh, basically with NSAIDs fluids and rest uh, and uh, sometimes antibiotics. In severe cases, when we have hypoxia, people will need to be admitted uh, to the hospital. We will need to give them uh, oxygen and also all kinds of uh, supportive care. By that, I mean uh, antibiotics, um, corticosteroids, antibiotics, anticoagulant uh, medicine, non-invasive ventilation, even mechanical ventilation if it is needed, uh, and changing of position, and so on and so on. So, uh, and this can really take up much energy. So, and everything is uh, done in order to help our immune system to develop this reaction the reaction that I talk about uh, talked about uh, at the beginning so we don't give anything that really attacks the virus we give therapy that helps our immune system to eliminate it oh it is also known by now that uh, COVID can damage other organs so one of them is the heart so the myocytes in the heart have also a stew on their surface and COVID can infect them and cause myocarditis and pericarditis in the heart. That can lead to uh, many problems. One of them is myocarditis. Uh, also, uh, the disease itself uh, can lead to uh, people experiencing some heart problems like arrhythmias and palpitations. That is uh, actually relatively common. Also, uh, hepatocytes and holangiocytes have ACE2 on their surface. And we also see in COVID a rise in uh, liver en enzymes, IST and ILT. There are many different reasons uh, why these enzymes rise. Um, it is known that COVID directly can infect cells, so a direct damage. It is also known that uh, cyto uh, cytokines, if there is much of them, they can cause inflammation that is not needed and thus destroy the cells. Also, COVID can uh, rupture plaques in vessels and damage blood vessels, which will cause, of course, hypoxia itself. And also the hypoxia that is caused by uh, pneumonia can lead to cell damage on the periphery. It is also known that the kidney uh, has S2 and that's why it can be damaged. Uh, it is known that uh, the support cells of the um, olfactory uh, epithelium in the nose uh, can be damaged by COVID, which explains the loss of smell. But also people have, the COVID has been found in the brain. Um, and some people have uh, after COVID memory loss and so on, but that needs to be <clears throat> still researched. So uh, coming back to the beginning, 
COVID is actually a primary a disease. COVID-19 and the virus SARS-CoV-2 is uh, something that primarily affects the lung. So the lung is the primary problem where the uh, infection starts. And we don't have anything specific to treat this disease. We are trying to treat it uh, with supportive care to help our reaction to destroy the virus. Uh, by now, there are many variants uh, of the virus. There are vaccines that have been uh, developed in order to prevent the infection, but it will definitely take uh, some time uh, more to uh, uh, see what the definitive outcome of all of this will be. Thank you.